Hi. Hello. Two old men with tea. Here we go. <laughs> cheers, cheers. Uh, a long time ago, you introduced me to Sito Paladi, which is this... Yes, uh, Churan. Churan, that you mix it with honey. Yeah. And before I go on stage, I have it. It kind of gives my voice a stamina for the next 30 minutes without before it starts breaking again. Okay. And now you have given me organic throat coat. Yeah, but don't be like, this is Veer's throat coat in my <laughs> mouth. Like, that's a... <laughs> That's a different bit. Yeah. That's yeah. That is a different. Hey, thank you so much for coming on Journey of a Joke. Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. Uh, congratulations on the special. Thank you so much, man. And uh, before I actually dive into all the notes that I have written about the special, you have fucking notes, Avish. I have notes. I have. Uh, and you have two pens. I have two pens. I have black pen, which is the first draft pen, and red pen, which is the second draft pen. How PCS employee of you? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please rate this call after the call. <laughs> Tell us as well. We we have worked with each other, I think, for many years. My first, I think, my first time uh, when I was doing stand up in Delhi. You guys were bringing in your shows to Delhi as well. Yeah. But you and I properly interacted after I moved to Bombay. And yeah. Weird Ass Office in Bandra, you guys had a lot of sketch shows that you were doing. And you, and you came in and were the, the best thing in, in all of those shows, man. Oh, man. I don't remember how, how it happened, but I just... It seems like a flash of memory, but all I remember is... That we did a show in Delhi after yeah. we'd done a lot of gigs. And at that time, my then girlfriend's mother had come for the show. <laughs> and he goes up and he said, he is amazing. He's the best comedy actor. He's got the great energy. He's great. And I'm like, all right. But also, like in Delhi, you were, I remember when you came for the first show, you were like a local celebrity in Delhi because you were on the radio and radio, yeah. And you came in with like this entourage of women who were <laughs> way above your league. You know uh, me. Just <laughs> one after the other. And like both both in, in beauty and altitude were far above you. Uh, uh, yeah. And yeah, dude, you can act, act. I've told you this. Like mm. uh, you're in a series that I've directed and, and you're, you, I think you're one of like four comics who can act. Thank you you know, sometimes when you put comics on a in front of a real film camera or a real mm. cinematic camera, you can the YouTubeness of a comic comes out. You know, where mm. you can tell, okay, this guy or this girl's been doing a lot of YouTube sketches and they're mm. not accessing emotion as much as they are projecting emotion. And you can fucking act, man. Oh, thank you. That's a good insight. Uh, project emotions don't. What is it? No, access emotions access. don't project emotions. Access emotions don't project emotions. Yeah. All right. Hey, thank you. Uh, but that's, I remember, well, that was one of the first times I think I was just like, this guy's a solid guy. As opposed to, it's like, oh, he's an acclaimed guy. He's a known guy or he's a good comic. It's like, all right, this guy's a chill guy. Can be friends. Can be friends. Yeah, Have yeah. to be equally successful, but can be friends. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. No? I don't think I don't think any of my <laughs> friends are at equal levels of success with me. And I'll tell you why. Not because of them. My shit oscillates pretty <laughs> up and down pretty quickly, dude. So, Like you say in the special, uh, Indian privilege is volatile. It's very volatile. And it is... Uh, it is Good to be my friend and bad to be my friend. Uh, <laughs> it changes from week to week. Up and down. So, You've done comedy for... Uh, of 16 course, years. 16 years. Right? But I've taken it seriously for about 7 or 8. You know. Yeah, because uh, you have done so many forms of comedy, as one yeah. might say. Being also somebody who had been doing comedy internationally. And then when you came to India, uh, taking TV as a projection uh, with... Uh, CNBC. I was calling News in the loose, Yeah. Uh, post that, setting up... Cardinal Bengen, which is yeah. an improv crew back then. Yeah. A sort of different improvisers. And then the Amateur Nights at Blue Frog and all of that. Amateur so. Nights yeah. at Blue Frog. Then uh, the shows that you started doing outside the city. Yeah. It was Amateur, Amateur Nights. Nights. Then then Alien Chutney. Then Cardinal Bengen's. Hmm. And then we started doing those sketch shows. Correct. So having done so many different kinds of uh, forms of comedy. Could you tell, could you tell me why that shift? Because... I also feel like, hey, I want to try these different, different things. I like improv. I like this. And you also enjoyed and were good at it. But then the decision to this. For me, it was a mix of killing and bombing in front of a crowd that wasn't mine. You know, you realize what it takes. So if you spend a lot of time, you know, at the comedy cellar or at the improv or at the comedy store or something abroad, so you're no longer performing for your own audience, right? Mm. So forget going to America and touring on the weekends or going to Delhi and doing Siri Fort or mm. YG Stadium or whatever. 
you just popped into the improv on a on a given night hmm. which is different from popping into habitat or kaku club on a given night because they still know who you are and they're excited <laughs> to see you you said kaku club i mean yeah sure <laughs> club right when it, when it was not a gym um and <laughs> <laughs> it's so a gym. True. Yeah. This is how great the Indian stand up scene is doing. Hey, do you have clubs? No, we have uh, one less club. We have two clubs and one gym now. Yeah. Uh, you pop in mm. to one of those places. They don't know who you are. You're just some random Indian accented Indian face from abroad. Mm. The intro is this guy's from Mumbai. Welcome he's passing through town. If you kill, you learn something and you want to do it again and again and again. And if you bomb, you discover because you're surrounded by really people who've done club time and working on craft, mm. and all of your safety nets have kind of been removed from you. Mm. you. You no longer have fame. You no longer have fandom. Act outs don't work that much anymore. <laughs> um, and especially in New York, New York is very like tight joke, tight joke, tight joke. Move the fuck on. Mm. You know. So it was. I think it was spending a little bit of time abroad that that helped. Kind of be like, oh shit! I really need to work on this, man. Mm. Very interesting because I've done some stage time as well in New York, but not at the level mm -hmm. or the consistency that you have done for stand up. And I feel like it's the same thing when you go to when you go to a club where nobody knows you. In your case, it'll be it's way more drastic because we had this conversation. I think a uh, um, I think eight years ago, if I remember, was about this. Um, your more liberated in experimenting with comedy as opposed to that yeah but also uh, you know i'm doing the career in reverse man like okay. when kavi and i started doing shows like mm. history of india and battle of the sexes and all you know we had to write 90 minutes of new stand up and just go up on stage in front of 400 people hmm. or 800 people no dynamics nothing worked out no tags nothing tightened and then you do you would do 90 minutes for 800 people again and again and again hmm. and the show would tighten right hmm. but there was no concept of like there was there was no places to go and work out 10 minutes of material hmm. Hmm. this is pre even comedy show and palladium and all of that stuff hmm. <coughs> so now you realize the importance of just kind of going bit by bit but now i'm comfortable enough to write on stage a little bit as well hmm. where i'll i'll write six or seven pages and i know that i'd only be a minute or a minute and a, hmm. and a half at the end of it but i'm okay to find that minute and a half hmm. on stage do you first take the thought pen it down verbatim then take it on stage do you take it on stage see if you're interested then pen it down what would your process let's say be in this i would begin with a a statement like hmm. a a feeling or an emotion hmm. or a, an observation and then i would ask enough questions to myself mm. where if i answered enough to prove it to myself it was worthy going on stage with that's mm. the so okay um masculinity seems broken mm. all right uh, is a weird thing to say mm. out loud but i feel like there's something there right so if i agree that that's something that i feel like i need to talk about to myself then mm. why is masculinity broken who represents good masculinity uh has it changed before does that affect world politics does that affect um strong man politics what about andrew tate what about the manoverse uh what about sensitive men how does that affect feminism how do you know just like 80 questions mm. will be the this thing and then i'll kind of start answering them with jokes that come from more questions as well hmm. that is just a process of regurgitation right so you start with like that and then be like uh, six pages will come out hmm. and then i'll like walk around the house with like a hairbrush or a or a canary kind of odorant hairbrush to act like a mic instead you think yeah. that fear is doing his <laughs> bit here like what the masculinity, is, masculinity broken. is broken yeah and then i will um that will come down a little bit and then i'll go on stage hmm. and like find it well, would it be correct to say that after you question the statement you also kind of question why should i do this is it worth my time is it worth talking about or do you just directly no if i if i can't find enough angles to it hmm. i'll drop it okay so you do drop it and yeah. you keep it in the back burner that maybe i'm not ready for it if yeah. the if like the premise is so interesting i'm like maybe i'm not ready for it yet happens yeah. if there are not enough angles as opposed to failure of making it funny no yeah for sure like but okay. if i can't find at least 15 to 20 different angles on it mm -hmm. um out of which two will end up being what you do on stage or three will end up being what you do on stage yeah. i'll drop it 
okay. at this stage at this stage because you're still saving up on time yeah so great so have a very strong statement that's interesting or exciting yeah. for you to work on and also kind of represents who you are at this point in time and, specifically for you and maybe doesn't represent me but but a statement that they can vehemently agree mm. or disagree with have an opinion on have right. an opinion on like so so i do think that when you represent when you present a premise to a crowd before the premise has to come a notion that they agree with or we're going to war hmm. and then the crowd preps to go to war with you you bought their attention you by you bought their attention by declaring something it's like a if one may say it's like the the thumbnail of a youtube video you've got their attention yeah. and now the premise is where of course then then each question which you said which is very interesting this is not a process that i've seen in all the episodes of yeah. journey of a joke usually everyone's process is different but taking the statement and questioning it yeah uh it's there are of course many rules of uh doing comedy questioning is one very easy way of mining out yeah. material and thoughts and opinion so you question the statement and the answers is where you try to find the joke yeah and to me it comes from question like okay and sometimes you'll you'll zoom out from a personal story okay you know like okay i, I have a story that i'm i'm going to try tonight at the habitat right which is um i got cheated on mm. and uh, i went to vishnu devi to get over the girl right which is a a story Beautiful. that i talk about right it will begin with questions only so it will begin with me going okay that's the story and i know i have to tell the story mm -hmm. but we have to make a declaration hmm. right so the declaration is maybe something like um let's talk about infidelity have you ever been cheated on or do you know if you've been cheated on interesting right now what's the worst thing about being cheated on hmm is the thing right is that somebody bang somebody else hmm but you didn't get to but you but we didn't get to but also you want to know about the thing right so did you do the thing how many times did you do the thing oh, right and yeah. then they'll always be like just one time bullshit it was so many times right? <laughs> yeah, because yeah. if if you just did the one thing nobody ever talks about the one thing <laughs> yeah, right? yeah 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 right so how many times do you have to do the thing where you have to talk about the thing hilarious like, okay uh and then it'll be like um you always know Hmm. Right, hmm. Um, because you feel it in your gut, and then it goes into a bit of. A, and if you are cheating, uh, you feel it ev every other place as well. <laughs> right? But then, but I'm like, if you're cheating, you too definitely know. Nice. Can you cheat on somebody and not know you're cheating on them? It is saying yeah. So then, what would that scenario be? Now here's three scenarios of how you could cheat on someone without knowing that you were cheating on them. Ha. Huh. You know. Uh, so it's literally just. I see I see what's was, possible what's possible what's this, possible this is such a great uh, it's uh, I won't say a hack of yeah. coming up with but also morning pages a lot of people who yeah. do journaling uh, even in therapy when they ask you to write it's mostly question and answer yeah. with yourself a conversation with yeah. yourself uh, this is such a interesting way of finding your route of finding jokes this is all done on paper yeah. you said you've started writing on stage as well yeah. so my question is do you take this Six pages worth of material that you've written. Give it a day so that you have fresher perspective, or that very perspective you take it on stage. I can't wait. Like if I've written it, I need to go tonight. And do you kick in your memory when you go on stage, or are you working on like whatever comes from whatever I've written? I will read it twice before I go on stage. Practice it. Yeah, and not practice it. I'll read it, and then it'll come down in my mind. You know, I'm ah. dyslexic, so I can't remember word for word. Hmm. So it'll it'll fashion itself into. some sort of economy of words hmm. in my mind okay yeah. and then i'll go on stage with like just headings hmm. and then i'll run it yeah that makes sense do you usually get like i get excited to take it on stage yeah right uh the process of writing angles is also exciting the process of locking into punch lines is what is creates a little bit of self doubt So yeah. in your case the statement is strong. Yeah. You know that when you go on stage you're excited to do so yeah. you're not worried about it. The interim place which is what makes every set really funny is to lock into that punchline. Do you give yourself the leeway to lock onto a punchline on stage no. or do you have to write it? I usually there? need something strong. And then what will end up happening with me is I'll have something strong. Mm -hmm. And it'll get the laugh that i kind of expected to get or maybe don't expect it to get mm -hmm. and then suddenly shit around that will start to pop and be roads i want to go down and so you get new angles from i that. get new angles but i also will get louder laughs on other shit 
okay then i would imagine like okay if we're going down this cheating bit right so the questions then became what's the best part and the worst part of being cheated on right so the worst part is when they confess hmm. right because then they're exercising their demons hmm. right at the end of the day so hmm. then it goes into a bit about it he's like i just didn't feel seen no i didn't feel <laughs> like yeah. i was being heard and i'm like was the guy who bent you over listening you know you know it, go, it goes into who did she bang etc 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 right Sorry, yeah. uh but the best part about being cheated on hmm. is you get to act crazy for 2 months with everybody <laughs> in your life right you get to be fucking nuts yeah right so then what kind of crazy behavior is there etc etc et right got it. now you get to act crazy for 2 months is a laugh hmm. right from here you could go we've all said something crazy hmm. you could go specifically i know somebody who has said something crazy hmm, hmm, right hmm. you could go here's what i have always wanted to say when i go crazy when i go crazy nice. okay. or you could go i have always wanted to catch somebody cheating so that i could say <laughs> this thing that i've had in my head for 20 awesome. years and i could make it work for the situation hmm. right and then you could also be like how crazy could you really go hmm. right uh could you be racist hmm could you be offensive mm. could you be uh, you know uh, what what could you be so like these are all the places that you can go right mm. now mm. i'll start asking those questions on stage and i'll get something from a crowd okay and then we'll go down that road okay so if i have to uh, succinctly put this process so far correct yeah. me if i'm wrong uh, as an artist you need to have an interesting statement something that uh, the audience agrees or disagrees on something But that like catches strongly catches an emotional interest as opposed yeah. to intellectual interest only you question the statement and the premise mine it for as many yeah. premises or angles as you have yeah. uh before you actually take it on stage you rehearse it a few uh, you read it so that you know the thing that sticks like it's i wrote it in the morning in the evening i'm excited to do 5 out of these 10 yeah and that automatically edits down yeah. in your head then when you're working on the 5 on stage you are questioning the premises again yeah. waiting for new form of writing which is this form of writing which i enjoy which, which is on stage which the audience will take you down take you down and then you choose one yeah that is an interesting process like that seems succinct uh do you review when you come back and yeah. when you do is it the same day or do you give it time i'm I, just being specific on time because sometimes i feel that's the best part about comedy if it stays i listen to it immediately as i get back from the club so i'll get back and i'll play it audio audio and then i will uh, it will send me down uh, sometimes it will make me write like other shit that oh, not the to opposite do. i like to quit comedy when i hear myself <laughs> do i'm like what is this no what yeah and b- yes. but also dude you do i don't say this with any arrogance but uh, uh, if you you're fortunate enough to reach a certain level of audience mm. and success at your worst mm. you still need to be good all observation comics have a lot of respect for which is a personal bias i was discussing with dinkar today about like personally biased because that's what i think i want to learn as opposed to when i see well crafted comedy specials i'm like well played i do think we're both you know we're not too far from each other in terms of years we've been doing this mm. but we have to acknowledge we're both babies in terms of craft and voice and all mm. of that stuff mm-hmm. really. 16 12 2000 9 is when i started so you're about 12 years in right so really who the fuck are we hmm. you know uh, in a world in which comics really round their voice at 25 years you know it's like what seinfeld said in the documentary yeah. uh, comedian yeah you grow uh, you're a 16 year old baby i'm a 12 year old exactly, baby exactly right Got it. but like louis ck is 39 years in yeah okay fine chapelle is probably peak of powers 30 years in 32 years hmm. in so hmm. really at some level what the fuck do we know right uh, but i do think that um as opposed to should i do that hmm. if you were to just write hmm. with intention of telling a story hmm. or with intention of what you find funny mm-hmm. or with intention of what you feel hmm. so that you fall on to the page hmm. Hmm. like let that be step 1 hmm. and then maybe you could think about how to mold that interesting yeah into a quick fire bit or into a multiple callback bit hmm. or into a discomfort bit Hmm. etc etc so if, if you maybe worry about the economy of words and laugh per minute and craft of it later hmm. and the heart of it first hmm. maybe that's a a way to look at it too yeah absolutely i'm writing that down because first heart and second brain yeah is usually 
a good place like even the artist way and a lot of other books that speak about writing in general is that unfiltered thought and then edit your thoughts yeah. similarly with comedy the beauty of doing stand up is that you get to write twice uh i'm going to talk about uh landing okay. uh for the uh, song titles album <laughs> I, this the album is landing right. and we are going uh song by song nice the most annoying article i ever read in the west is why doesn't indian comedy content push the envelope <laughs> really bitch because we looked inside the envelope <laughs> there are court cases inside the envelope <laughs> there is a court date on top of the envelope um <laughs> So we make safe content, right? When we're in India, we make safe movies where India always defeats Pakistan. <laughs> Doesn't matter at what. Battle, cricket, inhaling Uno, we always win. <laughs> And we love these movies, yes? And then when we're abroad, we make safe family content. Oh, look at this sitcom about this South Asian family. Look how they get on with their neighbors. Do you know what they do at night? They watch Bollywood movies about shooting their neighbors. <laughs> Oh, but they're so conservative. Yeah, they live abroad. That's where conservative India lives. Abroad. If you want your Indian children to be virgins at 25, you raise them in New Jersey, not New Delhi. <laughs> But it's true. Like, am I wrong? <laughs> Any people raised by Indian parents abroad? Come on, second generation. Let me see you. Come on, Indian parents here. Yeah. I say this to you with respect. Your parents' version of India does not exist. It's archaic. It's gone. Also, your pop culture portrayal of India doesn't exist. This India where we all walk around like, oh, put, 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 put. do we talk like that back home? No, Indians talk like that here. You know what that shit is? That's an American accent. Come home. Aaja, aaja. Come home and witness modern India in all of our chaos, but our infinitely larger beauty. Come home. And and if you're not going to come home, never lecture us from abroad about what it means to be Indian. In the words of every Mumbaiker I know. मैदान में आ नहीं तो गांड मरा आई ट्रांसलेट डोंट वरी इट्स नॉट इज गुड इन इंग्लिश इन दिसन बी ऑनिस्ट again what i liked about the special that it began you come in and you start with i'm terrified usually yeah. in a comedy special you have you first throw some observational bit yeah. to get the audience going here very clear this is my special it's going to not even in the second half in the first half only it's going about where i who i veerdas am currently as of today well, that, i wanted like a a humble start Mm-hmm. So uh, you know the opening line is thank you so much that was aggressive mm-hmm. i was already terrified before i came out correct so instantly you put them up on a pedestal hmm hmm as yeah. opposed to look there's three ways to come out right uh, one is to be like uh, chicago <laughs> like, and, and everybody's like yeah how are you do it yeah. <laughs> but everybody's like yeah but we know where we are <laughs> and you know where we and are and i am not chicago and, i am raj kumar <laughs> yeah. okay and the guy watching this is in fucking bareilly <laughs> you know watching netflix so that's one yeah the other one is like a, a chapel or a louis ck trick or whatever where they come out ah, and it's like so uh, a baby died you know something like that and then mm. instantly it manages expectations correct right but here i was just like i really want to put them up in the pedestal and the theme of my show is kind of me being terrified anyway you correct know? because after that the entire lines again very well crafted this seemed like it was a rehearsed bit uh, that you wrote and you practiced yeah. it which is the depression and anxiety data for dopamine news is fake comic books are real ceo welcome to the show ladies and gentlemen that seems like a nice yeah. bit that you have written because lots of point 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 but again the same thing about why aren't you exploring all of this which of course gets yeah. explored later but also it's because you have 7 seconds on netflix okay you know netflix yeah. <laughs> like netflix will tell you you have 7 seconds, seconds okay. to get them yeah so okay. you know the one way to do that is to come out and be like i have 7 seconds shut the fuck up yeah. let's go that again that's such a great opening again, that's a great opening i have 7 right? seconds netflix gave me this data since i have 7 seconds to hold your attention then you go but here at least this is a trailer for what's coming up in the show correct 
And that's what happens also yeah. because you talk about all of these things. <coughs> yeah, exactly. So I I cover everything that I touch yeah. in that beat. And then you get into what I call observational travel material because yes. it starts with London which is also a story about I mean the the British lady. Yeah. Very amazing uh joke that I liked about the uh <laughs> the commonwealth joke. What's the special to know? Yes. Uh then you go into New York where it's yeah. uh, the rain in New York purposeless uh, again this is so well written which is purposeless mist hangs around your face multiple alcohol having a conversation having an animated conversation having an anim- having an animated conversation it's like a like and you do this but again i was just like so many syllables delivered it's like uh, you, you have done this show clearly over i mean i would say over 50 times or I, more than that i did a 160 shows i was being modest with yeah. the number because you do that's what the indian head nod is crack 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 after that again america buried dead bodies big spaces lost yeah. kid going into the valley violence we uh, true crime documentary uh, on camera in uniform then comes the russian kgb story yeah. so if i look at it as a comic who's breaking it down london new york uh, middle america russia uh, then you come to air india yeah. because that's where you technically start your story yes. so the entire bit in the middle about london and all of that is like a good international everyone should yeah, like observation but it's, but it's very intentionally this is going out to 100 countries yeah that's what i that's what i wanted to ask you yeah. because after that it becomes a very personal story where you are in all of them this bit all of these bits if i look even if i remove it these could work really well online yeah they, they could be 5 minute youtube bits or whatever yeah. but it's very much like it's written for somebody who doesn't know who i am the show yeah. is written for somebody who doesn't know who i am yeah you know so it's very much oh you just clicked on this random indian guy because the because you happened to watch hasan minaj 3 months ago in the algorithm <laughs> fed you yeah. you know so <laughs> fed you the new indian guy wait is the release plan <laughs> <laughs> and you know now this guy has some shit to say about shit that i like yeah uh, got it i begin my story 9 and a half minutes into the special 8 minute 30 minute mark light changes and the half of your fit is in the stand yeah. and the prison look joke which is 8 minute 30 seconds off yeah. air india bit uh, you set context uh, and here i had a question which i'll come to then the terrorist bit being on news with bbc yeah. bbc great joke about british divided india which is on yeah. your trailer perfect again very well crafted joke after that the next major bit that i like is about the western thought where you talk about i am not indian enough to study doctor but indian enough to not so i'm too all. indian for the west but too western for india yeah the entire three premises uh, um, there's again a shot at the 13 minute mark with your jump uh, dad hit sorry papa is the first word yeah. again i would say nice west versus uh, your like not west enough not east enough like that but it's because at minute 8 and a half mm-hmm. i've laid some heavier shit on you yeah because you that know? entire part sets context to who we thus is or why the special yeah right uh that's why i i, I like that context setting yeah. of course gun control then um, and sex in english shukriya hmm. these are again i feel like individually great observational jokes which now fit in really well into the narrative well you have to think of them like i think of them which is in this special the rule was uh seriousness will be followed by silliness hmm. so hmm. You, there's no uh there's no middle ground between seriousness and silliness hmm. so we'll do the dark shit you will get laughs Thank in the dark you. shit but then it's got to go somewhere really really silly hmm. and then we can talk about middle ground material and tell stories and all of that hmm. so hmm. it will go from i'm a terrorist uh, i've been banned uh, my mother was disappointed i got death threats hmm. uh, i was on the news uh, i was compared to uh, leaders uh, blah 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 to uh sex in hindi thank you very much madam you know yeah. like it's got to go that's got to be the thing. it has to go on that yeah that's why that bit also worked like the the hindi conveys more empathy yeah. then you had that meme dalai lama jesus moses and muhammad joke death threat that comes in social media follower point is also again it's just set more context but uh during get rights for ravichi right huh you didn't get the rights no, right? <laughs> well done dude well spotted <laughs> so you want to know the, the actual trick i mean all yeah. right so So the, there's a bit where I go. Uh, I, I don't. I don't even think I can sing it here. Can I sing it here? Of course, I can sing it. Okay, so someday you leave this world behind. So live a life I you can remember. remember, right? And so big applause break because that's this thing. Yeah, it's musical. Also, it's yeah. musical, right? So I did it in the show. <laughs> right? Of course, you did. <laughs> and then, and then everybody's like, "Yeah, it's fair use." And like I was directing, right? So I looked at my my nice uh, American crew and I was like, "Hey guys, your legal is it?" 
like yeah yeah in america we do this all the time it's fair you some like chal bencho main gata right abhi came back home my indian legal is like tera dimag kharab hai tu kyu gaya right then i had to dub it dude hello <laughs> so then i'm like sab <laughs> <laughs> and for a second i was like i know the lyrics but i can't place why did he make it spoken as a bar poetry yeah but also i tried so many permutations in comedy I, i did some spoken ones as well i'm like some day you leave yeah. this world behind <laughs> and it looked so bad i'm like how do you also have to sink it <laughs> You also have to kind of sink it to, to whatever I did, yeah. whatever you did. Yeah. Oh man, yeah. I saw it and I was like, oh my god, I'm dying to ask this question. <laughs> yeah. Let me get. I there. didn't get right. Ah, uh, but yeah, it. Uh, the worst part or the best part is there's a callback to the same joke that comes after <laughs> twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> I was like, wow. So for me at that time, I was like, <clears throat> it's a good joke, and that's why it's got a callback. But I guess. you know snp where jokes go to die Jesus, uh, uh, for this all these premises before this are the bits that you individually working on and added to the to the special to punch it up or while writing these bits organically came up the younger generation bit is something i wrote because my fan base is very young right now like mm. my the majority of my fan base is between 18 and 25 mm. which is insane as mm. a 43 year old man right mm. now either you can go and be like fuck you people you fucking kids mm. you know uh and i'm not quite old enough to do that yet mm. Mm. you know like bill burr for instance is old enough to have a very young fan base mm. and unapologetically shit on that fan base yeah. right i don't get to do that quite just yet mm. you know mm. and because i knew i was going to talk about hatred i had to acknowledge support early in the special because there was support right so there's a little bit about how uh, we are with you we this is a movement and i'm like this is not a movement we're eating maggi right <laughs> yeah. um had i not talked about that hmm. and then later on in the special been like i felt so alone etc etc you know there hmm. are people in that audience going fucker i tweeted you i messaged you i messaged about you i hmm. you know i i used to get messages from kids going i fought with my family on a whatsapp group for you hmm. they like, fucking keep going bro etc hmm. it felt dishonest to not acknowledge it not acknowledge it earlier okay. in the special otherwise it also comes across as uh, Uh, and i think uh, through this special i'm not trying to be a victim i'm not trying to be a champion here i'm not trying to paint myself no for sure yeah and, that's the, the tone of the special and because you kept saying it again and again it kind of was like okay good that he's mentioning it because i know when you're doing a bit about this without acknowledging support if you directly go into this has happened it might sound across as put painting yourself as one may say a victim but in this case it just seemed like oh the audience is with you i am on the same page as you then it doesn't seem like ha huh? aisa kyun but it also it's honest in terms yeah. of i cannot deny hmm. that i went through something very very hard hmm. and i cannot deny that that something very very hard eventually was very very beneficial hmm. 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 these are both big realities in my life hmm. 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 you know where i had to go underground for a month and a half of my life hmm. it was very traumatic for my family hmm. but then when i came out There was a sea of love. Mm, mm. Tickets sold out in three minutes. Mm. Everybody came out, you know, with an emotional reason to come out. Like now, support, as, as opposed, as, to I want to check him out. As opposed, to, so, and I also cannot deny that many people were on the fence, irrespective of their ideology. Yeah, you know, they were just like, I don't know how to feel about that piece. Understood. Yeah. You know, so to come out and be the comedian who milks it. Mm. is dishonest mm. and to come out and be the comedian who pretends like it never happened and there was no love or you didn't benefit because of it no, is also dishonest mm. you know so mm. to me i'm not a victim i'm not a hero i'm just trying to find the fucking funny in this man mm. you know mm. Mm. you're first you're my priority the audience um boy make up with dps the home i failed my sa gyys and sat kissing is exploration all of that it seems like nice um bit that have been placed here also which comes seems like good bits written earlier placed as a part of representing this bit called 18 to 25 that I'm I'm just calling it as that. Well yeah but I also wanted to chat about like validation and dopamine and hmm. how um I think the initial premise of that bit was you know we went from being 
a society that fought to not being put in not be put in a box hmm. and then boxes started representing dopamine hmm. so now put me in as many boxes as you can hmm. because each box feeds me validation you know hmm. so hmm. earlier it used to be like i'm just a guy hmm. but now it's like i'm a this that this that this that this that this that guy hmm. because this and that uh friendship and validation hmm. and acknowledgement that were never being fed to you until social media came along right hmm. Hmm. so i was like okay if i do this hmm. and we talk about uh, age or dopamine or sexuality hmm. and the premise is that this generation puts themselves out there very fast hmm. often times before they've completed the experience mm. so the bit about me kissing a boy mm. uh, i'm like then i need to bring something to the table cuz you mentioned their perspective now you need to give yours yeah, but, you're doing it through your story of the yeah but i, I mean i i'm not going to talk about your experimentations mm. unless i share some of my own experimentations understood so then i'm meeting you on a level right so it's almost a give and take in this bit i would say yeah okay okay because a bit that i wanted to dive slightly deeper yeah. into 28th minute 08 seconds to 30 minutes 30 seconds which oh means that it is uh, just a minute and a half to minute yeah. and it's not that long that's what she said no sorry <laughs> my bad we need <laughs> we needed a silly joke man somebody had to bring it yeah. back yeah. um the bit about privilege privilege is volatile mm-hmm. found that premise very interesting yeah and the joke that i found really funny in that is they keep telling that indian comedy does not push the envelope you know why would we push the envelope because we looked inside the envelope <laughs> yeah. it's hilarious after that lawsuits whatever else you want to say these are the reality but that's it's like a joke that's under your nose that up but i also think it's it's something that you relate to because it it's something we would say in the green room of a comedy club yeah. like i think we have all read a uh, an article about comedy or a review of comedy in india right right that that lionizes these western comics right mm-hmm. oh my god is really out there or she's really out there pushing the envelope of what can be that person wouldn't last 30 seconds in india <laughs> that's true 30 seconds either a you know fucking come <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, and yeah. talk yeah ke bol you know and every comic in a green room has had that fucking conversation yeah, yeah, yeah. because we lionize them too yeah. and we wish for the freedom to uh, to push the envelope etc etc yeah. but it's ever more uh, annoying when some uh, you know fanboy kid writing a review is like man where is the fucking where is india's dave chapel <laughs> really really where is india's <laughs> dave chapel in jail pretty soon if there was a the what the future. fuck are you talking about where is india's dave chapel what's wrong with you that's so true it's off the time when it comes to push the envelope the question that comes in is it's not that we don't want to push the envelope we have to push it to our parents who then <laughs> yeah, have to push it to yeah, society exactly. also good there are lots of people who are trying to not push the envelope and it's very tough to push it in that because of the lack let's say lack of legal system or a la- general fear that might exist in case we want to talk about it i, I mean the, f- the fear for whatever I, i think we now live at a point where who the fuck knows hmm. what what's going to get you in trouble you just don't know right That's so true. you have to treat it like it's a line और हर आर्टिस्ट का टाइम आता है यू इन द फ्रंट ऑफ द लाइक तेरा कट के पीछे यू नो तेरा सात दिन होगा तू ट्रेंड होगा तेरा फोन ऑफ होगा और तू पीछे जाएगा लाइन मैन यू जस्ट होप दैट देयर इज इनफ पीपल इन लाइन इन फ्रंट ऑफ यू दैट आर आर दिस थिंग आफ्टर दैट इन दैट सेम बिट यू गो इनटू द नेक्स्ट बिट अबाउट इंडिया वर्सेस पाकिस्तान द द वी आर वाचिंग मूवीज अबाउट किलिंग आवर नेबर्स वाइल लिविंग नेक्स्ट टू देम एट द रिवर नाउ um the दैट आई थिंक इज अ रियली गुड बिट एंड आई रियली होप you can develop that more further in the special maybe next special yeah. because the dynamics that i have seen my family lives in vancouver yeah. everyone there is either from punjab or from pakistan but they speak in punjabi yeah. so my brother's cricket team has so many pakistanis and punjabis who are playing through that you get to see that it's a similar lifestyle the yeah. only difference there's differences not in culture but there's only differences in acha mai wapas ja raha hu india or i'm going to pakistan i'll come back So there's a sense of oh yeah I forgot you're from Pakistan or like I forgot you're from India. That happens in Dubai and Western countries and a lot of places where you see a yeah, lot of people. Yeah, we're all the same Asian. kind of with DC. Because you and I are South Asians yeah. abroad. Here we are Mumbai or Goa or specific. 
because the conservative india joke is hilarious yeah. uh if you want to raise your uh, children to be <coughs> virgins you raise them in new jersey not in new delhi the accent pa 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 you yeah. know who talks like you know what that is that's the american accent and the last bit which is don't lecture us from abroad maidan mein aaya ganmara the entire bit in general it seems like properly rehearsed and you knew this is a big applause till here because even in the video there's that shot where you turn around and you come back but it's from a different yeah. uh, cuz your hair looks different also <laughs> there's a bit where i tell the people abroad i'm like never lecture us about what it means to be indian from abroad hmm. in the words of every mumbai ka i know maidan hmm. mein nahi to gaan bara you know now i've said something about people back home feeling something hmm. so we cut to a different shot which is actually me in mumbai Oh that's a Mumbai shot. That's a Mumbai shot. See that's what, so uh, there are So my hair is different yeah. my ka- kurta is different. Yeah. It's St Andrew's auditorium. Hilarious. So it's just for for me. You know yeah. what I mean like that shot's just for me yeah. but I'm like if I'm going to claim that Mumbai said something mm. I'm going to do that joke in Mumbai mm. and film it in Mumbai mm. so that you fucking understand I mean what I say. Mm. I'm not bluffing on behalf of Mumbai because what what you do have to realize about that bit is uh, however you feel about the bit maybe you like it or maybe you don't. it's not easy to do it to their face ha huh, okay do you know what i mean it huh. it is a it's a new york crowd yeah it can alienate you immediately it can alienate, so it is very much you know people who drove down from new jersey from new york from connecticut it's an american crowd largely mm-hmm. over there mm-hmm. so to tell them your parents don't know what the fuck they're talking about mm-hmm. your accent is bullshit mm. your you know it, it's not a easy it, it's a bit of a confrontational bit yeah to do in the US. It must have been tough to do in the first few times but after you started seeing it work, you knew that this bit is worth milking right in the middle of the special uh before you go into your accent improv because this is yeah. a strong bit. The reason I chose this bit also is because it's got conservative India joke to it. You know that it applause really big. There's a shot that you intentionally put which yeah. I now know is, is from Mumbai. is from Mumbai yeah. as your own inside because you're directing this. Yeah. So you're like I'll put the shot. Brings me back to uh um the shoe shots yeah <laughs> dude like so many people what have what have you been hearing about the shoe shots and shots so like what have people interpreted out of so first though netflix and everybody was like what the fuck is this it's such a <laughs> choppy shot you suddenly randomly hmm. this thing to a shoe and i'm like yeah and they're like it's intentional i'm like yeah <laughs> right and they're like why i'm like you'll see no <laughs> at the end of the day some people are like oh this asshole has his name on his shoes Hilarious. you know right. he's got callbacks from the special on his shoes Oh great. Now that as I'm going to be honest with you, a fan came up to me with a pair of shoes mm. when I was in New York once. He waited for me outside a club. Mm. And he's like, "Sir, you like Maggie, no? I made you Maggie Air Force 1s." Mm. Right? And will you please these are for you. Will you please post about them on Instagram? This kid called Puneet, mm. who lives in New York, right? So, there's nothing I respect more than people shooting their shot. Mm. You know? So if you if you waited outside in the cold outside Gotham Comedy Club for me for two hours, mm. waited for me to come out and give me a free pair of shoes, fucking respect, bro. Mm. At the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So when I was doing a special, I called up Puneet and I'm like, bro, I need something to distract people from the sand. Mm. Mm-hmm. I told him the trick. Like the whole special, it, if you really want to get like meta about it, is based on a YouTube clip from the Prestige. Mm. In the Prestige, Michael Caine tells a girl, mm. he's like a magic trick has three parts. Mm. There's the pledge, there's the turn, and there's the Prestige. Mm. The pledge is where a magician shows you an inordinate object, mm. right? The turn is where the ordinary object does something extraordinary. Mm. For that, you need misdirection. Mm. And the Prestige is when you bring the object back that mm. you think is gone, right? Mm-hmm. So to me, the sand is the object. the pledge is me pouring some sand at the top of the special and you don't understand what the fuck it's for right the misdirection is the shoes mm. at some point i look at you and i'm like this sand is from india mm. that's the turn and then i end the special on my knees just going the floor is home mm. and that's when i bring it back and that's the prestige mm. you know so i was like puneet just i'll pay you I'll credit you on Netflix, mm-hmm. and that's what I believe he's doing very well now. Mm-hmm. You know, just make some shoes. Come see the show and make some shoes. Huh. So this dude went and made some shoes, man. Like I, di- I didn't even think twice about what was on the shoes. Huh. And then suddenly, at the end of the special, all the shoe shots cut together, huh. and you realize it's Juhu Beach, etc., etc. But for the longest time, 
everybody at like Netflix, my uh, Matthew at Rotten Science who uh, produced the special, even my editor Dave, everybody was just like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and they watched the special and I'm and like... Got the context yeah. of it. Oh, got it. I never saw the shoe as the misdirection because uh, when you poured the sand, again, watching, watching, you're like, oh, this is, it's like Chekhov's gun. Yeah. You've set it up, it's going to go off at the end. So if you did this and didn't acknowledge it, that would have been a question to you, like, why did you do that? Yeah, but, uh, but if I had not shown you the shoe, huh. you'd have thought about the sand a hell of a lot fucking more. I was, yeah, uh, for me, I think I was thinking about this, again, different for me because I think I had context to this. You knew, yeah. I knew. Yeah. So, I don't know what it's been like for like others, right? Because yeah. that's the one perspective that got lost because I already had a context of what's happening. Yeah. Uh, because we spoke about, uh, long ago we were speaking yeah. when we met uh, in the middle. So, I was just like, how did the audience get it? Because I, because I knew it. I didn't know. I would like to know as well. But all of this makes sense when Virdas comes and it says written and performed and also directed. But I'm like, it's it's the part. There is a yeah. thought behind all of it. And I don't know how many people know. Or I, is there any other place, any other Easter eggs that you've left in the special? That there's a little bit of stuff, but uh, it's not a flex. You okay. know, it's some shit is just for you to surprise yourself also, to see if it's even possible. Like you know, I push something. I push something. Like, dude, the last two times I've done a special with Netflix. I go in with what it looks like in my head mm. and you can see panic on their face because mm. you know usually they're used to like production houses coming in with like PPT of these colors and these LED panels in this set like on Virdas for India mm. I do them a half pizza <laughs> I, was like, I was like so it's half a pizza mm -hmm. and I'm <laughs> sitting here in the pizza and there's one slice gone and that's foreigners <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, yeah, weird that uh, you seem to be really clear about <laughs> what you want. And, and that's literally what it looks like. And then uh, on landing, um, I was like, half the stage is sand hmm. and half the stage is black. Hmm. And they're like, is there any other set? And I'm like, yeah, there's some lights at the back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll make it like a chessboard. So hmm. sand and lights at the back are kind of like the two white grids and then black and black are the hmm. two these things. But they're like, no lights. I'm like, no. And they're like, no backdrop. I'm like, no. And they were just like, so how long will this take to build? Hmm. And I'm like, well, how long does it take to unload sand? <laughs> <laughs> you know, a fucking long time as it <laughs> yeah. turns out. Because you need out. a fuck ton of sand. Yeah. Like literally the only set dressing that we did was at some point the sand overflowed mm. and I told the art department just make some <laughs> yeah, squigglies in the that. sand. Right? I saw the corner squigglies. I'm like, oh, where is this uh, old Vedic motif <laughs> coming from? <laughs> right. And York. so literally, bro, that was like four hours before we shot the show. <laughs> of course. Me and Kavi Shastri are in New York and they're both like, Kuch bana na either. <laughs> and then the art department guy's like, I'm going to fucking do it. Mm. And he made something. Before shooting landing this store wasn't called landing no it started out being manic man and then i ended up using only about 20 percent of manic man what about wanted uh, wanted is what manic man kind of became it's it's the last two years of my material correct, but correct. the show in this form really happened at the edinburgh fringe festival okay that's when it took this narrative huh. and i did about 35 shows there huh. and then i did a bunch of like this particular with the footwork with everything else maybe 45 50 shows Okay, 4550 shows with the locked uh, vision of the special. Your method, <coughs> what seems clear, hmm. is also very interesting is that uh, you are a live touring comic first and the special comes out of it, but the special works as a deadline for you to work towards. Yeah. Is that a good way of putting it? Yeah. That way consistently every year, like you just release your special landing and the very next day before we are shooting Journey of a Joke, Veer puts up the release for his next tour. And in my head, I'm like, it's not written, it's not written. And today you're like, I'm going to now figure it out. I'm like, that's awesome. Like, th that's almost like saying, I will, like, I am holding myself, my future self is holding my present self accountable with that, uh, with that release. But I, I understand emotionally what it's about, like what okay. the show is about. Like, mm -hmm. uh, my next tour is called the Green Light Tour, right? Yeah. And so, at some point in, I was just like, okay, inside me, I have a red light and a green light. Mm -hmm. And, that's something I'd like to talk about. Like, I'd like to do mm. a show that oscillates between pure goodness and pure fucking evil. Understood. On stage. Mm. I think that would be fascinating. 
So I'm like, okay, we'll call it the green light tour. Bagi dega jaye. Bagi dega jaye. Because know, this happens. Your tour might be manic man. It might become wanted, but the special is called landing. But it's yeah. still the same journey of that one hour yeah. being built. But we changed the like the, when we shot it. We still thought we were going to call the special wanted. Okay. And then I I wanted to come from a more humble place, so we called it landing. Like landing back home. Landing. Like, the the show is about landing back home, right? Ah, that's okay. It's about carrying your land. Mm-hmm. and it's literally about like the, the the land underneath me is indian land you know so and it's a land doing it come and, on and some reviews are like will be like <laughs> he landed that shit or whatever you know it, it <laughs> yeah, gives so, as opposed to he's wanted you know <laughs> yeah fair no. it's a more uh, uh, positive outspin yeah. to uh, the special uh, to finish up the special uh, uh, like i mentioned uh, observational bits were according to me thrown in to the narrative but then when the narrative took off uh, right from the privilege point to the accent improv that you did I had so yeah. many thoughts and opinion on that and it just seemed like <laughs> i'm glad you did it because for me i was just like ye director edit kar deta like if it was any other director editing it they'd be like remove the accent improvise bit of course towards the end it comes in but what it really worked for me was that just like you said it's the world seeing veerdas let them see the veerdas is good at doing accents also and there was a closing to it so through the set i was like Did he put it in the special? He's improvising this entire accent thing, and then when he comes out, I'm like, okay, cool. I, this seems like yeah, I've, I'm still undecided where I feel on uh, where, where I land on that because you got 40 years hmm. of doing my accent hmm. as a punchline. You literally hmm. 40 years of stand up. Everybody in the world has been able to do my accent hmm. and get laughs off of it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I can't do yours for 10 seconds hmm. in my accent. Hmm. You know what I mean? Really, I can't do a British accent. Yeah. Or I can't do a Russian accent. All of you fuckers <laughs> for forty fucking years. <laughs> Indians also. <laughs> My mother don't talk. Blah 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 blah. You can yeah. do that shit. I can't. I can't get ten <laughs> seconds of your shit. Just because yeah. I like to do it. Yeah. I don't know where I where I sit on that yet. You know. Yeah. I mean, from my perspective, I'm like, I'm glad you did it. You do yeah. your accents well. I do. And you've uh, always had accents, even when we were doing sketches. Even if it doesn't require <laughs> yeah. it, suddenly, why does this guy have to be British? Yeah. Just cause we're just doing an accent. Yeah. So this entire bit, I was like, I'm glad you kept it because it seems, um, it seems prepared. But I know it might have come from an improvised space. Oh no, it, it, it was definitely in a basement at the Fringe. Yeah. Show number twenty five, where you hate your show. Yeah. Then I just wound up in some farmer, some this, some that, etc., etc. Yeah. And I could have written an end to the improv, but yeah. it was funnier to be stuck. Then uh, the uh, A plus B, the whole square. I really enjoyed the analogy that you were making with two A B because it does do a proper callback towards the end. Yeah. So that's why I was like, the setup of two uh, A B is so relatable, especially for an international, an Indian international yeah. audience, the NRI audience. They're like, I'm a good, I know the two. Yeah. I was like, I know the two A B. Yeah. If I was watching, I was like, Oh no, I know the two A B. So I was just like, Where is this going? What is the two A B? Which becomes a laugh at the end. Um, then uh, from there, you go directly into choke me, which I think was a interesting uh, personal narrative that got a lot of uh, laughter. Another great joke that comes after the prefect beat in Air India is that aren't we expected to serve angry uncles? <laughs> Perfect. I was like, Sahi, good resolution to that bit. I got my good one punchline off the same. Uh, then the next bit that I really, really enjoyed was the Emmy and Film Fair, yeah. specifically the Film Fair bit. But the Film Fair bit seems to be something that is so well tight that it it came, it predates the creation of this Film Fair bit, predates the special. It might have been part of the Manic Man tour. Yeah. Okay. So because it's probably it's very about tight. two years old. Yeah, because that yeah. you know that thing of. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is definitely a fifty show plus. Yeah, for sure, uh, for sure. Uh, as yeah. opposed to the special, which is like fifty shows done. The suicide bit, of course, the awkward checkout, very nice, very very funny. The British girl, American girl, Instagram influencer, uh, how you react to it, bringing it to Veed. I think that point that you mentioned that if it gets serious, I have to bring it back. Veed is best place to close it. Yeah, uh, with it just makes it easy. Last part. which i think that hate love part mm-hmm. the power of the mic uh the soil reveal and air india takes it that entire bit for me is like a it's like a performing uh, performance art which has comedy uh is the the way you said it that is funny but the poignancy is felt without trying to deflate 
by doing jokes yeah sure because then after that the first class bit is hilarious It's because jokes, yeah. if you didn't do that then the first class bit would have been another good closing joke yeah. but the fact that you stay back and this is where i belong that entire payoff happens start for me starts from the hate love yeah. bit the soil reveal bit because for me as like aha for a lot of audience it could be like oh ho but that is an emotional reaction going into the first class bit and you closing with my name is uh, veer das and thank you so much for being here it seems for me a any of these bits would have replaced it in any other way would have been odd uh, to watch well it's okay with that section of the show mm. um i'm going to be on, honest like i had a rule with myself mm. which is i'll never do it the same way mm. ever so mm. i've done that section of the show maybe 40 or 50 times mm. and because i was directing the show mm. i knew that's the one place where the camera will be slightly tighter mm. you know with the lighting will be slightly more intimate and you want to cover it as filmically as you want mm. and it comes boils down to accessing emotion not projecting emotion mm. right um because it comes from a very personal place yeah you know and it comes from a very authentic place i was just like i'll feel it each show each show i will feel mm. it and however the hell it comes out it comes out but for me performing a high emotional bit every night yeah um till the day of the taping it evolves right because after some time it is exactly the performance and you being a really good actor i feel like you can hold that emotion that you felt over the first few times you did and like this is what i need to replicate over and that's in the two tapings the best tape gets picked up yeah uh just with overall is what i think i could be absolutely wrong finding an emotional way to close a emotional narrative especially towards the end i i'm very i'm very curious to know how does one do that like i know i don't have the strength or the courage to pull that off so i always pull back from committing fully in this the entire bit is committed like that mike uh, the hate love bit the soil yeah. reveal bit these are all like you cannot bail those jokes because yeah. they are implanted from the beginning yeah. so you have to build yourself up to the emotional energy to perform without it looking like uh, uh, over rehearsed yeah. or for that matter not as authentic so every time you do it differently have you had a show where you didn't feel the closing and how did you absolve that and like okay it's not all right look at the audience okay in it hmm. so at some point during the fringe um i was going through the motions hmm. and it was maybe show 15 or 16 and i said my manager reg his name is he's great with just being brutal with me <laughs> okay you know that's the rule with the two of us is don't ever Sugar you know we, we don't blow smoke up each other's ass we're very like this thing and i sent him a tape and uh, of the thing cuz we were talking about directing it etc etc and he's like are you tired mm. cuz it's you're killing but like what are you looking at hmm. and i'm like i don't know what i'm looking at i'm just i'm just doing my show bro like what <laughs> and he's like do you want to try looking at some people cuz i feel like you're not connecting hmm. and then i was like okay next show bring the house lights up like 5% hmm Mm. and in this emotional bit mm. um maybe i'll just kind of take in what people are feeling cuz you know when i do that live people are crying people are mm-hmm. some people are sitting like that some people are you know when's the next joke some people are uncomfortable etc mm. and i'll just kind of feed off of how they feel mm-hmm. you know mm. mu- much as you would with another actor yeah you know what you don't see in the special is the house lights were actually a lot brighter in my special mm. i have no audience shots in my special i don't yeah, even no. notice this like no i noticed because i was just like are how they going to edit around then i'm like shoot shots and <laughs> yeah i darkened the audience on post production okay so they were actually a lot brighter okay so with that i was just like okay whenever i do this bit i will look at four or five people in the audience mm-hmm. and however they feel mm. and however they make me feel mm. i will deliver according to according that. to that do you uh, uh is there a show that you think that the where it the closing of the special clicked uh, one problem that most comics have is i don't know how to close this set this bit leave mm-hmm. alone a special uh in this uh closing being like when i mean the closing the entire bit did it all click together at a certain time at the fridge underground or was it uh, it was at the fringe it was like 
Hmm. Week three, you know, hmm. I understand now why people do the full four weeks or whatever it oh, is, right? Oh, 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 But week three, I was just like, I fucking, I hate this show. Hmm. I'm done. Um, let me film it and get it done with, etc., hmm. etc. And then suddenly, I was like, oh, I should, uh, I should move these three things around. Interesting. Hmm. And uh, I should reveal the sand. I, earlier on, I was revealing the sand at the very end of the show. Hmm. Like it was kind of like a ba 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 ba. By the way, this is Indian sand. Don't right. believe me? Watch my special again. Thank you so much. I'm Veer Das. Good night. Hmm, 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 hmm. And then I moved it back. Hmm. So just like things fell into place in that sense. Okay. But I think I just kind of caught a fluke with how it was delivered when we shot it. Like if you yeah. if you look at the the three shows that we shot, ha. it's different every time. Ha. Okay. You know. But uh, I've used the edit of only one show. By the way. So oh, the entire thing is one show. That's one show. So oh, that's very good because I know that that becomes a really troublesome thing to match continuity, and when you don't yeah. have audience shots. So it's largely one show. Maybe this, this. So what we did is we shot three shows. Mm. First show was only one camera mm. that we shot, and that was just Jayoza on stage with me, picking up hands and this and that, etc. Et yeah, because there are lots of shots which are like a wide angle, much closer, and you know that shot cut from another. Yeah, exactly. So that, that, but that was zero sound, by the way. So we just shot with one camera. I'm saying just shoot visuals, mm. and I'll cut to them now and then with uh, and live audience included. Live audience included. Okay. Then the next like day we mm-hmm. set up our six cameras or seven cameras, whatever it was. We shot two shows, mm. and I used the first show. You can ask the director; he'd know. Huh? I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, then I used the first show, and I just put some of Jay's shots from yesterday into that. Okay. But on that first show, I just caught a fluke of. They were feeling it in a good right. way, and I was feeling it in a good way. So this is the first show. This is the first show. That's great because I I I believe that if the second show, uh, even if it was in the second show, I mean I would like to see how that ended, how it closed, uh, separately. Because here I was like, man, it just seems like a smooth flow. But if he's done it a hundred times or like a fifty times, I would be like hundred fifty times. I'm like, how do you deliver an emotional closing each time, like a theater performer? But at least you don't act. in that moment you don't act yeah i thought you had to rely on the acting mostly to deliver no, the rely on memory man like mm. a, 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 what i'm saying isn't false it's real it's authentic mm. so i'm just talking about shit that happened to me at some level mm. you know if you look at the way that it's delivered it's not like well you just like hate is felt you know it's it's very internal mm. it's just me remembering shit mm. i went through it yeah it's not a speech as much as like an inner monologue of like this is what i want to yeah. talk about hence the closing Which of it? Uh, last question. This is something I do. Uh, your advice for me specifically, for you. Okay. I would immediately um, stop listening to comics, and I would make a list of everything about yourself that scares the fuck out of you. and i would write jokes about it irrespective of how you think your audience would feel about it or how you think other comedians would feel about it like write 20 flaws of yours or 20 things that scare the shit out of you and really just dive deep and i think you'll find something that is undeniable with your audience because i recognize in you a need that i have in myself which is you're at your be show mm. i got a keep you flying mm. you know what i mean i've got to send you home flying on a cloud i'm mr happy mm. like i represent joy for you i'm mr happy mm. this is my commodity mm. and i don't think it's dawned upon you in your writing mm. that really making yourself a fool mm. really committing to being the fool mm. uh is very painful mm. but then you're really mr happy you know what i mean like then you mm. Then you're really sending them home, flying on a fucking cloud. Mm. So if you're a fool, like go, really be a fucking fool. Mm. You know. Wow, that is uh, <clears throat> that is deep, and also uh, it has given me a clear next thing to do, <laughs> <laughs> which is great because I do relate with it. Uh, the battle between cool and funny sometimes you uh, alienate or you demonize silly, or uh, you know, performing comedy. you hear like you know um, there's a documentary called stats on netflix you should watch that after yeah. we special which is called landing uh in that also uh, um speaks about that voice in your head that's the limiting voice uh like whether you call it part x or your critical voice of it and i think to list 
I think what you said is interesting. My my critical voice is no particular other comic, but my insecurity as a comic portraying a comic. Yeah. Which is like it's not funny enough, it's not edgy enough. Oh, what is this edgy? Why are you being silly? But Why enough you for this? who? Ben Chot, who? Who is this enough for? Mm, interesting. At That's the end of the day. Mm. You really you really want uh 80 people in a crowd going uh, and one dark motherfucker comic in the back going ah, 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 ah. <laughs> that's the career <laughs> really you know where when you say it like that it seems like a bad life choice <laughs> you know the 80 people who paid money to come and see you you want them to just be like what the fuck They're is going on like, but like in the back me and neville are like ah like that's the career you want really i mean no no of course of course of course <laughs> you know what i'm saying Abhish, I'm not saying you don't have to be silly. Yeah. I'm saying I know you. Mm. You're my friend. You've mm. gone through some deep, dark shit, mm. and I've yet to see you be silly about anything that's not silly. Hmm. Oh. 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 Wait. I see what you mean. Right. Do you see what I mean? I see what you mean. I'm not. I'm not saying don't do Abhish. I'm not saying don't be silly. But I'm saying do silly about some real shit. No. It goes back to the very thing that you had mentioned also. Like even in your process of it, having a very strong statement yeah. or a relatable statement. Most of my premises or anything that I've worked on are to be silly as opposed to finding yeah. the silly in something deeper. Twenty, yeah. twenty questions. That's what I'll get to do. Um, that's all the that I had to talk about for the special. Uh, I think uh, anyone who's watching uh, this episode would probably realize that directing a comedy special, writing and performing a comedy special is a smaller part of going on stage on a tour and seeing what it happens. You're somebody who took Manic Man and became uh, Wanted, which finally became Landing. You're the same person who would have called it some other tour and then it became something and then you put it out. and i think uh, your life philosophy of announcing your next tour <laughs> without having a single joke written but i kind of ballpark the emotion is uh, to be honest as a friend enviable and also aspirational as a uh, as for any any comic in the world should be dude fuck all this noise fuck all this art i'm on tiktok just follow me on tiktok that's all i fucking want right that's how that's much the future of stand up that's how much of an nri weird you have become <laughs> you're asking us to follow you on app that is banned in over here <laughs> i have enough instagram followers i need tiktok followers yeah, i'm saying that's, that's how you sell tickets in london <laughs> fucking head to tiktok guys that's head to tiktok <laughs> uh thank you so much veer uh, for introducing me to uh, throat, 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 throat there you go There you go, and for Sito Paladi and for this amazing uh, time, uh, thank you very much. My man. My man. Ah. All right. Good to go. Good to go. Uh, this will go on your same YouTube channel, Sanu Babish, and all. Very close to the mic. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> 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 this will this will go on your same YouTube channel, Sanu Babish, and all of that. Yeah, stuff, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. In the comments, if you're watching this shit, let's be very clear. Best Sanu Babish <laughs> episode ever is uh, the Old Monk episode between me and Abish. uh well there's no art and there's no fancy set and nobody's uh you know uh, giving each other a, you know a pat on the back and all of that shit it's ballsy it was edgy it looked like dog shit it it, it looked fuck all and we should do it again so you should yeah. spam these comments and there should be like a son of a beach old monk episode where we go back and do that shit again. absolutely and this time around i shall join you for the done, old monk done 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 there it is adios friends Take care of yourself, and this is not even a closing. Uh, but yeah, if you're watching this, uh, uh, there'll be buttons that come up. Otherwise, Pranav, Lloyd, and Dinka will figure an exit for the edit. <laughs> See you guys.